Good evening, Javier. Can you hear me? I don't hear you. teacher. All right, there we go. I was going to say, I don't hear you too well, but now I can hear you. Okay. So how was your day? Okay. Katya, how are you? Hello, teacher. Can you hear me? Yes, Javier. Now I can hear you. Okay. I have a problem with the connection, the internet connection. But I think now it's fixed. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Katya, how are you? I'm sorry. I'm fine. Thank you. How about you? I'm good. How was what did you do today? I was working but here in Santana because I work in the bank. But I live in Santa Ana. But okay. I was, I was there. So you go to Metapan every day? Yes. How long does it take you to go from Santa Ana to Metapan? Uh, how what? How long does it take you to go from Santa Ana to Metapan? Uh, it's, um, it's 46 kilometers. 46, so one hour. Yeah, or 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay, okay. It's yeah. like Rafael. Rafael. Mm -hmm. Rafael lives in Santa Ana, but Rafael Hi, teacher. works in San Salvador. And Every day he goes. Travel every day too. Yes, he tra every day he travels from San Salvador, from Santana to uh, near Salvador de Mundo. Mm -hmm. And for you, Anna, how are you? Hi, teacher. How was your um, day? Tired. It's a heavy week. Yeah, why? Uh, in the department, uh, it, uh, we're doing the payroll. And uh, must be done Thursday, Terry. So, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> and one of my co workers are sick. He's, he, he's uh. sick. And I do her job and my job. So, I get retired. More, even more difficult. More, even more deep, yes. Okay, okay. I understand. Well, the first thing, guys, I, thank you so much for being here on time. I'm happy that everybody came. Um, I know sometimes it's difficult to connect on time. So what we're going to start with is uh, we're going to begin by reviewing a little bit from yesterday. 
So we're going to start only a few minutes. Tell your partner what you remembered, what we learned, and how do we use the different things that we had from yesterday, okay? All right, so we'll make the rooms, okay? And tell your partner what we learned yesterday. Henry, Henry, hang on. Let me send you to a room, Henry. Yeah. Hello, Ever. Ever, Anna, can you hear me? Ever, are you okay? You have problems with the microphone? Hi, good evening. Hey, yes, there we I'm, go. All right, good. I, I was connecting the headphones. Ah, no problem, no problem. All right, so what we're doing is we are in groups and in our groups, we're talking about yesterday. What did you learn yesterday? What was the grammar from yesterday? Okay, how do we use it? So you're going to go to your rooms and practice. Henry, Francisco, how are you? They're fine. Good, good. Henry, tell me what did we learn yesterday? Uh, repeat, uh, I don't understand. Yes, I said, what did we learn yesterday? Belong yesterday. What? What did we learn yesterday? Oh yes, I I learned I learning the the passive voice and mm. active voice and and pronunciation the letter O. Okay. Very in, in, in several is in various words, various palabras. Okay. In several words. Several words, uh, yes, several words. Okay. Good. That's what we started off. We we were in the groups. Um, the idea of review from yesterday, what we learned. Your correct error about the passive voice. We learned about the the active voice, and we learned a little bit about the pronunciation of O. Good, Francisco. What was the active voice? The active voice uh, is when the subject is important in the tense. You subdue the action. Very good. That is correct. 
the in the act of that is the most important. Who does the action? The subject. Very good. Katya, what is the passive voice? The passive voice is when the, the most important is it's not the subject, subject is the action. Okay. Okay. You're right. It's not the it's not the subject. It's the object. The object is the focus. Object. The object. Um, object. Yes. The object and what happens to the object. That is the important part. Okay. Henry, do you remember what is the grammar to make the passive? Uh, to make a passive. Who was talking? Uh, okay. Uh, I remember that in in passive we start with the with the thing for example the windows is broken and that's the most important and who broken the the windows is doesn't matter it's like the window is broken by carlos and that's a passive uh, example but to the, the structure, I, I can understand the, the no. structure, but uh, I understand the, 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 the idea. Okay, that's correct, Henry. You are correct. A good example is you. we start with the object, right? The object. Uh, like Henry said, in this case, the object, the window, then the verb to be. Remember, in the passive, the verb to be, the verb to be indicates the time. If you use in, is, indicate the present. If you use was, indicate the past. If you use is going to, indicate the future. The verb to be is going to indicate the time because always, always the verbs are in past participle. Like Henry said, the window is broken in present, in past. The window was broken in the future. The window is going to be broken. Okay. okay. Or the window sometimes, will be broken. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this question is very confused because I when when I was studying English, they say me don't use double pass. When you use the the verb to be in past, you don't use the the next verb in past because the verb to be is giving the the, the time. Correct. But in this case, in this case, is is a little bit com a, li a little bit uh, different because it's, bit. Mm -hmm. because it's like to to sing in Spanish when when you say eso está quebrado because uh, the the brock is was was the brock is in past no is in this moment exactly. Uh, Exactly. That's the same thing. Same thing like that. Yes, Henry. But always going to use the verb in past participle. Today, we're going to learn a little bit more about the passive, but today we're going to learn how to use it without by. We're going to see it without by. So let's take a look. Here we have a small video. Hi, we're back again. Now we'll study passive voice in simple present without by. Please pay attention to the explanation, examples, and exercises. Passive without by, simple present. For the simple present, use the present of be plus past participle. Active. They use the euro in most of the European Union. Passive. The euro is used in most of the EU. Active. They speak English in many European countries. Passive. English is spoken in many European countries. Active. They manufacture a lot of cars in Europe. Passive. A lot of cars are manufactured in Europe. As we saw with a simple pass, passive, we change the emphasis when we use a simple present passive. 
instead of saying they use the euro in most of the European Union, we can say the euro is used in most of the European Union. So that's the important thing. Now we're not focusing on the person or the people, we're focusing on the object. In this case, the object is the euro. And then what happens with the euro? That's how we change it. That's going to be the focus of the passive. So remember, the passive focuses on the object, not on the person. The focus changes from they to the euro, which is what we're interested in. Follow me here. I have these passive sentences to demonstrate how the by phrase is omitted here. The euro is used in most of the European Union by the people. Cars are manufactured in Europe by manufacturers. What I want you to notice is that the doer of the action in each of these sentences is obvious or not important. So the by phrase can be easily omitted. So this takes us to our structure. And because we're using simple present passive, this is what we have to work with is R present of B plus past participle. Can you now take a look at the following images and come up with one sentence using passive in simple present? Please write your sentence on our discussion box and ask your teacher to check it out for you. Okay. So what we have one more time is looking at the idea of how to use the passive in the present, right? Here we can see many examples how we take the active and change into the passive. The most important is not have the person at the beginning. The most important is have the object at the beginning and then the verb to be. And that's going to help us. Okay. So how are we going to do this? First, let's make sure that it's clear. Okay. So I'm going to give you a sentence. Uh, and then we try and I, we take a look. I put it into the chat to make sure that everybody can see it correctly. I make pupusas is an active sentence. I make pupusas is an active sentence. How do I make this into a passive sentence? Put your answer in the chat. Let's see. Let's see who is the first person to answer correctly. I make pupusas. How do we put into the passive? Pupusas are made. Put in, put in the chat, put in the chat. That way the other people. Okay. Let's see the first one, the first one to answer correctly. Ah, almost, Katya, almost. Yes, Maria. Maria was the first one. Okay. Made, made. There you go. Uh-huh. Yes. Because remember, we are using the past participle. So we have to make pupusas are made. No. Made. Is not the, uh, we don't have in the past tense. Okay. So, okay. Are made. Okay. That's right. And then, of course, like you said, we can include the person. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to think about El Salvador. What happens in El Salvador? What are the objects? Okay. So many times we say, we describe El Salvador. Ah, in Oloquilta, they make pupusas. In Santa Ana, they have a festival. No, now we're going to try to use the passive. Okay. What happens in those areas? What are those things? Okay, but that is for the past, not the present. Okay, so we're going to try in our groups that we're going to, and we're going to work with our partners describing El Salvador. If it's confusing for you, think of the sentence in the active and then change the sentence into the passive, like the example. Ah, in El Salvador, okay, pupusas are made, okay, for example. Eh, la Constancia makes Pilsener. Ah, La Constancia makes Pilsener. This is active. 
I focus on la constancia. But how do I change it into a passive sentence? Who can the tell me? Uh, is mm -hmm. made uh, by la constancia? Exactly. Exactly. That's what you're going to do. You want to find your partner to create some examples, okay? For Salvador, create some examples between active and change into passive. Tell me.
Okay, so let's take a look. I put in just a- Hello, teacher. Hello, hello. I put in the next activity into the chat, but right now let's make sure that everything is clear with the active and passive, okay? So in the active, give me some examples. What was the passive? What, what were some examples that you created with your partners? Maria, what was, some, what was an example? Okay, uh, I talked about uh, the local festival in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and um, in active, active boys, we said uh, people enjoy, uh, people is enjoy, is enjoy is correct? Enjoy? Enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, Rayland Park in the in the local festival. Okay. Okay. Um, um, Rayland Park is enjoyed in the in the local festival. Is the best boys. Okay. Very good, Maria, and it's a good example because it's very important when it's general. For example, people, uh, the humans is not necessary that we use the, the same by people. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's yes, Elsie, uh, mm -hmm. explain me. Explain to me, okay? Thanks. Right. Yeah, okay. Byron, let's hear yours. I see when you have one about Mayor San Miguel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I put it like the mayor of San Miguel made the biggest carnival every year but I'm not really sure if it's okay. That is not a passive, that is active because you focus on the mayor. The mayor of San Miguel is a person and this is the subject. The object, okay. So let's help Byron. Class, let's help Byron to make the passive. He has in the chat, the mayor of San Miguel makes the biggest carnival every year. How do we put this sentence into? The, oh, thank God. I think Byron only sent to me. I'm looking right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just noticed. I yes. Again. Uh -huh. <laughs> How do we make this into a passive sentence? Mm -hmm. See if I, can. I already sent it. Thank you, Byron. There you go. Okay. The mayor of San Miguel make the biggest carnival every year. How can we help and make that into passive? Who knows? Can be without saying the mayor and just mention it, uh, San Miguel, I think. Something like that, something like that. But maybe, maybe we can help you. Anna, Anna, do you have an idea? Which one, we know. No, you know. What about the other Anna? An Anna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. I I was I, I am seeing the chat. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe you can tell every year. Carl, um, the biggest carnival is made for the mayor in San Miguel. Good, but remember, not for the mayor. How do we say the person? It's not the biggest carnival is made? It's the made. biggest carnival is made by the mayor. Of by the mayor. By, by the mayor, yes. By the mayor, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go, exactly. And you are correct, Anna, is you can begin with every year or you can begin with the biggest carnival, the two mm -hmm. Correct, okay? Because yeah. time can go at the end or the time can go at the beginning. So okay. every year, the biggest carnival is made by the mayor of San Miguel or uh, the biggest carnival is made by the mayor of San Miguel every year. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. One more example, one more example to make sure that is correct. Javier, can you give us an example of you and your partner? What was the example you did? 
My partner Henry said, the, oh, okay. fireballs, the fireball is celebrate in Nehapa. Nehapa power. Okay. Nehapa fireball. That is correct because not focus on the person, focus on the fireballs. Excellent example. Not the people. Fireballs. What? One more time, Francisco. Yes. The fireball is celebrate in the hapa. Good. Remember, pronounce the celebrated. 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 In the hapa. The verb in past participle. Okay. Good. Excellent, guys. Now we're going to do an activity of reading. And then after the reading, we're going to have the opportunity to practice a little bit more the passive voice. If you cannot see my screen very clearly, I put into the WhatsApp group and is for the reading. This is the reading that we have on 1.10. If you are in the platform, it's 1.10. Um, let me see. And if not, it's also in the WhatsApp group. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger here. Excuse me, teacher. Tell me, tell me, Francisco. I need a, I need you add me in the chat because uh, don't send me the, um, the message. It's, it's it's strange because in the in the past. Uh, uh, more, uh, uh, Only you click level. on the link. Mm -hmm. No, don't don't appear me. No, that you no. don't. There is no link for for you to join. Okay. I, okay. But don't worry. We will. We will try to figure it out to get you. Okay, I, I tried later. Okay, no problem. We, we fix, don't worry. All right, so can everyone see? Can you see this? Yes, sure. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, great. I'm only going to read the introduction and then you we are going to read together the other part, okay? This is a guide to unusual museums, okay? So these are three different museums around the world, okay? So here we have the idea. Look at the pictures, okay? What do you see? What are the three different types of museum? What do you think they look like? Kind of scary. The second image. Okay, the second image looks like a little scary, okay? Mm -hmm. About food. One is about food, that's right. The traveling Museum of Germany. Okay, Germany, maybe. And this is, is about food as well. Or... Yes. Yes, so these two are, are kind of like food. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this one looks a little scary. Well, we're going to read. It's, but it's about gold. <laughs> and maybe about gold, exactly. Yeah. A gold going... mask. Mm -hmm. So the question number one, do you like museums? Have you been to the Lourdes in Paris, the Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City, or any other, or any of those other must-see museums? Well, now it's time to go off the beaten path. Here is the idea that we're going to read about the three museums, okay? Who would like to read number two, the Kimchi Museum? Who's going to read number me. two? Me. Thank you, Anna. Uh -huh. Who's going to read number three? Me, Me. teacher. Me, teacher. Mirna. Okay, Mirna. And who is number four? Me. Me. Okay, Francisco. All right. We have our three volunteers. Thank you guys so much. Okay, please read the first one, the Kimchi Museum. Okay, the Kimchi Museum, Seoul, Korea. If you don't know about Kimchi, a trip to the Kimchi Museum, is an eye-opening experience. The museum was founded in 1986 to highlight Korea, Korea's rich kimchi, kimchi culture. 
The exhibit includes display of cooking utensils and materials related to making, storing, and eating the face mold pickled vegetables. The museum also provides details about the story and nutritional benefits of Korea's from most beloved side dish. Finally, I stop by the souvenir shop to try various types of kimchi. Thank you. Very nice, Anna. Very nice. Good. Okay. Before we continue, are there any words you don't know? Any words you don't know? Storing. 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 Storing is like to save. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other words? Pickled. Pickled is like a, when in El Salvador we have a, for the pupusas, the, we have the cabbage and the carrots. This is pickled, it's pickled cabbage or pickled carrots. It's okay or, or no? So, so. So, so. Pickle is action for vinegar in the vegetables. Correct. That's correct. Oh, okay. The vinegar, correct, like the pupusas. Mm -hmm. Any other words? Okay. Let's go to number the next one the Museum of Gold. Okay, the Museum of Gold, Bogota, Colombia. If you want to see beautiful objects, the Museum of Gold is a place it holds one of South America's most stunning collections because the exhibit is expected. So brightly, so brightly, you can actually take photographs without using a flash or your camera. Not everything is made of gold. So among the exhibit are ancient, pre-Columbian items. Many of them are made from a mixture of gold and corner known as tumba, something. Okay, all right, good. The only, we, we need to practice the pronunciation, okay? We have a couple of words, okay? First, we have exhibits, exhibits. Then the other word is items, free Colombian items, items. And the oh. is copper, this word is copper. Is is a kind of metal? Correct. It's the kind of metal. Sometimes you see in the houses that they use not PVC, no plastic, but they use copper for the water. The traditional cables. Yes, or the traditional cables for internet or for phone. Those are the copper. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other words? Not for me. No, anybody else? Any other? Any other? St stunning is the correct word now. Stunning. No. Stunning, correct. That is correct. What's the meaning of stunning? Uh, it's a synonym for amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. This is stunning. Amazing. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other words? Okay, then let's go to the last one, the Chalk Museum. Okay. Sorry, teacher. Uh, before to start, for yes, the one after exhibits are ancient pre Columbian items. Good. Only the pronunciation is ancient. Ancient, okay. Ancient. ancient. Mm -hmm. What it means, ancient? 
Ancient means very old. Oh, okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Okay, now the next one, the Chocolate Museum. Okay, let's start. Yes. The Chocolate Museum, Cologne, Germany. The Chocolate Museum will teach you everything about chocolate, from cocoa bean to candy bars. You'll learn about chocolate's 3,000 year history and discover how it once wa was once used some money in South America. A real chocolate factory shows you how chocolate is made. After you've finished to the tour, you can sample a complimentary drink of rich, gooey pure chocolate, perfect for those with a sweet tooth. Okay, good. Are there any words you don't know? Um, what is sample? I don't know if, if it's synonymous of taste. It's similar, yes. It's similar to taste, exactly. And uh, what it means when in the last phrase it says perfect for those with that sweet tooth. What, so it, the, what it means sweet tooth? The sweet, sweet tooth, tooth. tooth, correct. The sweet tooth is the idea for people that like uh, a lot of sugar, a lot of uh, candy or cakes or pies is perfect for the people that like a lot of things that are sweet. Oh, okay. Mm. Teacher, the yes? gooey, gooey. Mm -hmm. What's the, the meaning gooey? Yes, yeah. gooey is going to be like, um, something that is like a liquid and a solid. It is, when you put together, it's gooey. Like you melt the chocolate. When you have the chocolate and the chocolate is very hot, the, like uh, the Hershey's, the Hershey become gooey. Like melted. Like melted. Like melted. Oh. Exactly. Okay. But it's not like gl glazes. No, 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 no. It's together, it's sticky. Okay, okay. Okay, are the other words okay? Yes, okay. Okay. Good. So here, as you can see, we read the article. Now we're going to answer some questions. These questions are about the article. What are we going to do with our partners? With our partners, we have two activities. Activity one is 1.9. 1.9, and this is using the passive voice. This is to help us practice. We have 10 sentences. We need to use this verb and put into the passive voice for the sentence. And then the second activity is we answer the questions about the reading. What is the idea? What meaning of words that you understand? Okay. Woo, Anna, you okay? Yes, teacher. Okay, Anna. <laughs> It sounds serious. It sounds like COVID over there. Okay. <laughs> oh. I, I, I feel tired. Okay. Okay. Good. Sick or tired? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what are we going to have? Remember, we are going to work with our partners. Exercise 1.9 and... Exercise 1.2 in the platform. It's okay? Okay. Okay, we have 10 minutes with our partners, 10 minutes to complete the two exercises. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs>
Omar, do you have problems again connecting to the groups? Active. Hi, we're back again. Now we'll study passive voice in simple present without by. Please pay attention to the explanation, examples, and exercises. Passive without by. Simple present. For the simple present, use the present of be plus past participle. Active. They use the euro in most of the European Union. Passive. The euro is used in most of the EU. Active. They speak English in many European countries. Passive. English is spoken in many European countries. Active. They manufacture a lot of cars in Europe. Passive. A lot of cars are manufactured in Europe. As we saw with the simple past passive, we change the emphasis when we use the simple present passive. Instead of saying, they use the euro in most of the European Union, we can say the euro is used in most of the European Union. The focus changes from they to the euro, which is what we're interested in. Follow me here. I have these passive sentences to demonstrate how the by phrase is omitted here. The euro is used in most of the European Union by the people. Cars are manufactured in Europe by manufacturers. What I want you to notice is that the doer of the action in each of these sentences is obvious or not important. So the by phrase can be easily omitted. So this takes us to our structure. And because we're using simple present passive, this is what we have to work with. Is R present of B plus past participle. Can you now take a look at the following images and come up with one sentence using passive in simple present? Please write your sentence on our discussion box and ask your teacher to check it out for you.
we may say the same thing in a different way. You may be wondering when to use it. Passive voice is the best way to express an idea when, number one, we don't know who did the action. Number two, there's no doer of an action. And number three, the fact is more important than the doer of an action. As always, I will ask you to stay around and stay for the explanation. We will compare active with passive, so you see the difference and notice the emphasis on each one. We will give you examples of each use, as well as the structure of passive voice. Passive with by, simple past. The passive changes the focus of a sentence. For the simple past, use the past of be plus past participle. Active. The president opened the building in 1931. Passive. It was opened by the president in 1931. Active. An American architect designed the building. Passive. It was designed by an American architect. I have this scrabble sentence for you. My sister, this book, in 2010, wrote. Can you try to unscramble the sentence and make sense of it? I will give you 15 seconds. Great. So we came up with, my sister wrote this book in 2010. Now in English, we can say the same things in another way. Let's work with another scramble sentence and let's do the same and scramble it and make sense of it. This time, I will give you 20 seconds. My sister, this book, by, in 2010, written, was. Were you able to do it? I hope you did. This book was written by my sister in 2010. Now let's take a look at each sentence. In this first sentence, which by the way is in active voice, the emphasis is on my sister. It was not Susanna who wrote the book, it was my sister. This book was written by my sister this book is the object, was, was or were, written is the past participle of the verb, by, by, my sister is the subject. In this second sentence, we're using passive voice and the emphasis is on this book. The most important fact is that the book was written. Now let's write examples for the uses previously mentioned in our intro video. Remember? We don't know who did the action. My Omar, are you having problems again? Omar? Hola, teacher. Hey, Omar, you're having problems, huh? Sí, yo no sé qué pasa, pero sí estoy teniendo problemas desde que inició la clase. Okay, all right. Don't worry, we'll try to help you. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, how was it? How do you feel? You ready to check? Make sure you have the correct answers. Every uh, yes. in, in our case, we, we waste the time in the fears. Uh, no, 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 no,
Oh. And we all was wrong. All was wrong. Wrong. Oh my all god. Wrong. Let's let's do it together then. Okay. Let's take a look at number one. Many crops are, oh. are grown. Wrong. Are wrong. There you go, are grown. And right. check here that we are doing it in the correct form. You see, ah, this is the correct form. Only the verb to be and the verb in the past participle. Uh, uh, I discovered our mistake. <laughs> what, what was the mistake? We write all tense in the Yeah, box. yeah, <laughs> I, I, now the mistake is very obvious. Okay, okay, let's try okay. number two. Some crops? I can send. I consume. Consume. I consume. I consume. Okay, consume. very good. I consume. Consume the, consume, okay? Consume. That's the right way, but okay. There we go, I consumed. Okay. Yeah. We can go, we can check one by one, but as you can see, that's the correct way. Only put. Correct. And then the verb in the past participle. What about number three? Oops. Uh, exported. Exported. Right. Are exported. Are exported. Okay. Rice is is cultivated. Is cultivated. Is cultivated. cultivated. Okay. A wide variety of seafood is. It's It's cut. Okay, good, very good. What about many people? Many people? Are employed. Are employed. Okay, good. Are employed. French and English? Are spoken. Are spoken. Are spoken. Because there are two, French and English, right? That's why it's... Yes. The U.S. is made up. It's made up. It's made up. It's made up. Okay. Good. A lot of sheep are raised. And the last one, cars and computers are manufactured. manufactured. I can hear manufactured. Yes, I think the spelling here is the incorrect, but let's check. Yes. There you go. This is the correct. So if you are doing it in this moment, now you see the correct way. Look number 10. Number 10 is different. This is not the correct spelling. No, it's yes. capture. Yeah. It's manufacture. Manufacture. Mm -hmm. manufacture. Okay. It's okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. great, excellent. Let's check 1.10, the reading. Okay, let's see. When you go off the beaten path, you do something unusual. Do something unusual. Okay. When something is founded, it is started. It is started. 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 Good. When something is stunning, it is extremely. Attractive. Attractive. Good. When something is ancient, it is very, very old. Very old. Very Good. old. And when something is complementary, it is free of charge. 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 And the last one. When something is gooey, it is thick and sticky. Thick and sticky. Okay. Excellent. You see. All of those answers are the correct answers. The U.S. is made up. Are there okay. any questions? No. 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 Okay. Wow. As you can see, like normal, we are very good. We are excellent. Right, right, right. And we are finished 1.10. This means that now we finished unit one and tomorrow we begin lesson two. Tomorrow, what are we going to learn? 
tomorrow we're going to be looking at past continuous and simple past. Okay, the past continuous and simple past. Do you remember the difference between the past continuous and simple past? Yes. What is the difference? Uh, Hi, everyone. Uh, when I you to add A and D in past I, I use was or were the verb be. Excellent. So you use was or were for the past, the continuous. Simple past. Mm. I hear a little confusion. Anna, Dimas, what? I don't remember the chair. Okay, okay, Anna, no problem, no problem. <laughs> I, I remember that. <laughs> 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 I don't remember very well, but uh, past continuous was when something is passing in in past. No. Like I was, I was driving, or I was drinking, uh, or like. I remember has been, teacher. Okay. All right. No. Okay. The simple past. The action. And well, the past continuous is correct. Is the verb to be? What are you? I N G. The verb yes. to be was or were, and then I N G. I was yes. working. I was studying. They were playing. This is the past continuous. The simple past is the action finished. The action irregular verb or. No. Irregular verb oh, or yeah. in the past tense. Well, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, Tomorrow uh, we are going to begin and we are going to learn a little bit more about the simple past and the past continuous. Okay. 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 Today you should be complete, you should be finished lesson one. Well, after the class, complete lesson one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thank, guys. You. Thank, Thank you so much Thank for coming. Thank you. And I see you tomorrow with lesson two. Tomorrow we go to lesson two. Bye. 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 Bye.